Best of R slash Entitled Parents Episode 119. Subscribe for Reddit videos daily. Cast. Me. Me. E.M. Entitled Mom. E.K. Entitled Kid. F1. Friend 1. F2. Friend 2. Ray. Ride Employee. Story. This was summer 2019. E.K. Mom. I'm bored. Me and my friends were at the line to this roller coaster. Last time, the wait took an hour, but this time almost twice that. Mostly because some kid threw up on a bunch of people. EM, hey, can we go in front of you three? F1, sorry, no. EK, move, me, nah, I don't feel like it. EM, I am, me, I don't care if you're an adult, I wouldn't move if you were Jesus himself. EM, how dare, me, shut up, we're not moving. EK, Mom, make them move. EM, you three are disgusting. Me, yes, we're disgusting little beaches. What are you going to do about it? EM, did you just... Me, swear? Yes, I did. EM and EK proceeded to cut in front of us. F2, hey, me, let them. It's no use resisting. EK, haha, I won. Losers. Me, ignoring EK. After this, let's leave. We've been here the entire day and my foot is still cut from that stupid tidal pool thingamabob. F2, agreed. F1 and F2 did a sort of secret handshake thing that involved hugging. EM, are you two? Me, they're not gay. EM, liars. You, Ray, mom, are you going to come onto the ride or not? EM, these three assaulted my, Ray, if you don't sit down on the count of three, you will be ejected from the ride. EM sat down, defeated, in the back row with EK. We went to the front row, not because we're those kinds of people, but so we could get as far away from them as possible. After the ride, the three of us left, hearing EM screaming at us for doing wrong. Thank you, next. I'm on mobile so sorry about any formatting issues. This happened about a month ago. I have many stories dealing with handicapped parking. Bit of background. I lost my leg when I was 13 due to a drunk driver, so I have had a handicapped parking permit since I started driving. I'm in my 30s now and quite heavily tattooed and often wear shorts when not freezing so pant leg doesn't get caught in the knee joint of prosthetic. I have some political and music slash punk stickers on my car. The interaction went something like this. Cast, me self-explanatory EM entitled mother kid son of entitled mother probably 8-9 years old NS nice stranger. I pulled into the last handicapped spot that was open, at the grocery store parking lot. As I am getting out, car stops behind me and EM gets out and storms over to me. EM, you need to move, I need this spot. Me, I'm sorry? EM, you need to move your car, I need this spot. My son just got done basketball practice and is tired and worn out so we need this spot by the entrance. Me. I'm sorry but I've already parked and have a tag to park here. I'm not moving. EM. All you liberal degenerate punks are the same. You only care about yourselves. Probably using someone else's tag because you're lazy. Me. Haha <laughs> I'm not the lazy one here. If you opened your eyes you can see I have a prosthetic leg. Now I'm going to do my shopping. I thought that would be the last of that but 15 minutes later I'm turning into and I'll and accidentally bump cards with EM. EM, how dare you. You did that on purpose. That's assault. I'm calling the police. Me, I'm sorry, I didn't see you, but I promise you it wasn't on purpose I had no idea you were there. EM, liar. Just like you are lying about being an amputee so you can steal parking spaces me. Can you not see the fact I have a prosthetic leg? EM, it's fake, you probably have your leg bent up. Me, yes it is a fake leg, it's a prosthetic. I guarantee you it is missing. I try to move past to continue shopping. EM, you are staying right here you still assaulted me with your cart and could have hurt kid. Kid, mom let's just go. EM, see my son wants to go because he is hurt. Hope you are happy. Kid, turns bright red, mom that's not true NS, is everything okay here? EM. This punk assaulted me with his cart and is pretending to be disabled NS. Pretending to be disabled? Can you not see his prosthetic leg? I've been in this aisle the whole time. It sure seemed like an accident. I think you should go on your own way and stop harassing people. 
EM pushes past me, almost making me lose my balance, but I say thanks to NS and continued with my shopping and didn't have another run in with EM. Thank you, next. Hey guys. Back with another story again. So I finally got time to post my stories here, so please enjoy. Warning. Some strong words are used here, and I am an Indian, so please excuse my English. Thanks. Backstory. Me and my parents were traveling from our hometown to visit my uncle, who lives in Hyderabad and it's a long journey from here. We stayed in the train for at least 24 hours straight, as the airport is really far away from our house. We decided to take the train to Hyderabad. I had some minor cough but not excessive. I generally coughed at night and usually early morning, but not after that. We even did a COVID-19 test which returned negative. We boarded the train, and the story started. Reference me, Woozy Dragon 4018. What can I say? EM, entitled mother, asshole, EK, entitled kid, asshole, TTI, train ticket inspector, the story saver. Part 1. We boarded the train from the station at 8 a.m. The train was delayed by two hours. Like always, I took the window seat. The entitled family boarded the train at the next station. Me, casually filming trains. EK, sits on the seat in front of me. Me, I coughed, and wiped my nose a bit. EK, EWWW. Mom, he has corona. Me, awkwardly staring at the kid what? EM, hey you, get off the seat right now. Me, and why is that so? Getting a bit aggressive. EM, I said, leave the seat now or I will take you to the cops immediately. Me, thinking to self, AWW man not the cops again. EK, yeah get off the seat. Me, hell no, I won't move an inch from this seat. Try to do anything to me. EM, tries to pull me over from the seat get off. Me, falls down now, what was that for? EM, you have the coronavirus, go sit in the other empty seat. Me, but it is my seat. EM, what did I just say? EK, sits in my seat, while his mother wipes off the seat. Me, I go to my seat. Try to push EK out of my seat and sit there again. EK, mommy, he pushed Emmy out of the seat. EM, fuck off you little kid. EM, pushes me off again. Me, time to teach you a lesson. Part, 2, at the exact moment, the TTI gets to the coach to check our tickets. Fortunately the EM and EK had been sitting in the wrong seat for this whole time. So yeah I got a chance. I saw their ticket which had fallen down from the book of the EM. And it said seat 42, 43 while they were sitting in seat 31, 32 or any other seat number. I forgot. TTI asks for tickets. We show our tickets and suddenly the EM starts shouting. EM, sir, this kid has coronavirus. Let him sit in the other seat. TTI, mom, but this isn't why. EM, sir, let this kid sit in the other seat. Me, sir, I don't have corona. They are lying and this is not even their seat. TTI. To EM get off the seat right now. EM. Boo. TTI. What did I say? Get off the seat and go to your own seats. EM. Defeated. Moves to the other seat. EK. Mommy. I want to sit near the window. EM. No. Not at all. Me. Happily filming trains again and enjoying the journey. The end. So the story finished just like that. Every time the cops come and save the day, I don't exactly know why but yeah. Also I am really sorry if the story was really short. Every story of mine has like 3 parts, but this had 2 parts, so sorry. Also be careful of the novel coronavirus. Always wash your hands and keep your body clean. As always, thanks for reading my stories. Thank you. Thank you. Next. This isn't my story. But I heard it from a friend of mine who is a GP but now also works at a hospital to aid the nurses during the coronavirus outbreak. And I thought this story fits in here like a glove. Little backstory, because there is a shortage of coronavirus tests where I live. Only people who show very strong symptoms or who are in high risk groups are allowed to get tested. So this woman and her child, who was around 10 years old, enter the hospital, which is already really crowded and chaotic since the crisis and loudly demands to the receptionist that she wants a coronavirus test. Since she wasn't coughing, didn't have a fever, and neither did her son, 
and both of them appeared healthy. The receptionist declined her demand and told her that they can only test those who are very sick or are in high risk groups, which they weren't. This apparently made her very angry and she began loudly yelling that she demanded that her and her son get tested. When her demand was again denied, she climbed on top of the receptionist desk and started yelling again that she and her son needed to be tested. When the receptionist got her off the desk, she then started fake coughing right in her face and around the hall. Then she apparently threatened that if she and her son didn't get tested, she would go to the intensive care unit to cough on and infect the patients. Thankfully at that point, security arrived and forced her out of the hospital. The police got called just in case she would return, which she thankfully didn't. Since she was a regular at that hospital, they could give the police her personal information just in case she would do the same at another hospital. TLDR. Woman demanded coronavirus test for her and her son despite not having any of the symptoms, climbed on the receptionist desk, coughed on the receptionist and then threatened to cough on IQA patients. Thank you, next. So it never occurred to me I never posted this old story here it's also a good break I suppose amid all this virus entitlement swarm. So this was back during middle school when I was very active at our local playground. Now our park slash playground is moderately sized and has a playground on either side of the park with a fountain in the center dividing the areas. Now what I'll call playground 1 is our usual grounds for our game we call metal or monkey tag. This involves tag but only allowing to stand on metal parts of the playground railings, bars, slides etc. Now playground 2 was the same but it had no real connection between jumps for us. While in the middle of our usual game and comes running a group of kids who were about 6 8 to guess, and on one of our jumps we narrowly missed one of them. After we checked if he was okay this is how it went. EK, yeah I'm okay. Me, sorry about that, but is it alright if you guys use the playground too? While we're here we don't wanna accidentally hurt you guys while we're here. Friend 1, we'll be done soon. Don't worry we won't take too long. His group of friends and him seem to appear to accept this at first. As we go on jumping the kid comes back. EK. Can I join you guys? Us. Sorry it's very dangerous and you could end up hurt. Besides we're about finished here. EK. Screams I wanna do that too. It's not fair. I am gonna get my dad to beat you up if you don't let Emmy join you. Me. Sorry but we gotta go now. On that as I turned around I felt a wet thud land on my leg. The boy had just spit a fat one at me. Friend 2. Hey. Don't spit at people because things didn't work out the way you wanted it's bad thing to do. Me. Look we gotta go and don't spit on people. We walk off to the drinking fountain at the entrance of the park and as I am waiting I feel a large sharp pain in my back. The child had apparently not like that we turned him down and latched his teeth into my back. My friend pried him off as he went it pinched down on my back hard and snapped off as my friend got him off. In that next moment EM had seen us pulling her kid off me and screamed at us. My friend checked my back to see if I was bleeding while this was happening. EM, what are you doing to my kid? You're older kids you shouldn't bully him what is wrong with you? Friend 1, your kid just ran up and bit my friend. EM, there's no way he would do something like that he is a well behaved boy. Besides he's only playing around you should just let him do what he wants. I turned around and my friend lifted up my shirt to show bite marks and a nice small trickle of blood. EM. Well if he did bite you, you probably did something to hurt him first. Me. All I said is he couldn't play with us after he spit on me and then he jumped up and bit me. Control your kid. Was not being polite I was pissed. EM. Well why not? Are you leaving him out of your games because he's younger no wonder. You deserve that bite. Friend two points at playground specifically a bridge section to another bit I am not sure what it was called but it was a longish jump we barely make. And was clearly a jump probably three times more distance the kid could make. Friend two. Alright so do you think he can jump from that spot to there? EM. No of course not why would he? Friend two. That's what we're doing so we tell him he'd get hurt doing what we are do EM cuts him off. EM. What is wrong with you kids? Are you trying to break your face and teeth? This is no circus this is a playground. What are you even doing at the park you're too old to do stuff like this? Can you even do that I bet you're just over exaggerating so he couldn't play. Friend 1 casually walks over to the playground makes the jump lifts himself and then hops off. Friend 1. 
they're happy now, we're leaving bye bye learn to teach your kid not to bite people or spit on people if things aren't going his way, em, well my kid could make that jump too, go play with him he can beat all of you dumb shits at it, completely forgetting her initial claims of her child not being able to make the jump and slash or breaking their face. I was about seething at this point from the whole situation and I guess my friend noticed the look in my eyes and just grabbed me and just went let's go we got dinner to grab. EM as we walk off, you kids are animals and shouldn't be allowed here you're a danger to every kid. Friend 1 flipped her off and kept holding until we got out of eye range while friend 2 yelled you're a dumb bitch who can't raise your kid. Honestly it was outrageous and at dinner my friend's dad was treating us for he asked why I had tears in my eyes and looked ready to punch someone and we told him the whole story and he just said yeah there are some crazy people but forget about it. Now let's eat. Thank you. Next. So my mill is the queen of entitlement. Her youngest daughter is 6 months younger than my oldest daughter. She and my wife were pregnant together for 3 months. It was hell. Anyway. When the girls were turning 7. My daughter wanted a party at the skating rink, so we made the plans. Sil, who is not entitled at all despite being raised by Mill, wanted a party at the skating rink too, so Mill convinced my wife to combine the parties. Fine, whatever. Except she also threw a party for her daughter the night before the skating rink party in case someone couldn't attend the real party. So, when we're all at the skating rink and the kids are having fun, Mill notices that my daughter has a slightly bigger pile of presents than her daughter. She starts complaining that people are showing up without presents for both kids. This isn't whining. She is spitting venom and trying to get the other adults to hate on those who didn't bring her daughter a present. Most of those people had attended the birthday party the night before and had given her presents then, so they didn't bring one to the second party. Mill said if you're invited to two parties, you should bring a present for each party which was asinine enough, but then Phil and his brother arrived. Now, my in-laws had been divorced for over 18 years, and my sill is by Mill's second husband. Mill goes out of her way to be nasty about Phil and is guilty of parental alienation when my wife was still a minor, so it burns her grits that my wife and Phil have such a great relationship. When Phil and brother show up with only presents for my daughter, my mill goes absolutely nuts. Now, Syl has quite a load of gifts, and all the gifts from the night before. She's enjoying herself with the other kids so she doesn't notice that my daughter has a few more gifts than she does. This is all my mill throwing a fit. She tells my wife that if Phil didn't want to bring presents for her daughter, then he shouldn't have come at all. My wife had had enough at this point and finally goes off. She tells Mill that Phil had no idea the parties were combined, and that he is here to see his grandchild, that Sil has more than enough presents at home and we will never be combining birthdays again. Mill pretended to suddenly feel sick and went home early, leaving us to clean up the party package she insisted we spring for, but hardly needed. Edit, my daughter's birthday is a little over a week after Christmas, so we celebrate her half birthday. Thank you. Next. I. Who else am? Entitled mother eck, entitled kid. So I should start off by saying I suffer from a minor disorder called ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, which basically means if I don't take my Adderall I have a hard time paying attention and sometimes they wear off and I have to take a smaller dose to get me through the rest of the day so I carry a bottle of extra pills. And I am on mobile so there will be mistakes and this happened a while ago way before coronavirus was spreading or even thought about it was in 2018 to 2019 school year. So my school's VEX team made it to Worlds and they were off competing so the rest of my team was watching I volunteered to stay back and watch our other robot then they leave I'm on my phone playing and every so often I would look up and survey my surrounding watching for people running so they wouldn't knock over our table and destroy our robot it was good for quite a few minutes until here comes ek running so i watch him to make sure he doesn't get too close then he slows down and walks toward our pit area so when he gets too close to the robot i say hey what are you looking at i said as nicely as possible he says your robot it is so cool i say thanks i helped build all of it then he says can i hold it me being the light-hearted person i am i say sure Boy that was a bad idea. I hand it to him very carefully and he does fine he folds it and looks at puts it on the ground and looks at it then he starts pushing it around using is it like it is a toy plane so I quickly stop him and say can you not do that. It took a long time to build and I am worried you might drop it. 
Then he tries to run but I get the robot from him and he screams give IT back. I say no you just tried to run away with someone else's robot. Now go away. Then he says fine. And storms off then I put the robot back and went back to my routine of phone and looking up. Another few minutes pass then I notice I getting a little restless and having a hard time focusing so I take out my container and take out one of my spare Adderall and grab a water. Then I didn't notice at the time but here comes EK with his EM around the corner looking at me as I pop the little tablet in my mouth and drink my water then she walks up to me and scoffs in the most Karen way ever. Are you doing drugs? Says EM offhandedly. No it is a prescription medicine I have to take for my addict. I say. No you are not that is made up you are doing drugs so I am going to call the cops and confiscate this robot because a person who does drugs doesn't deserve it. EM says while EK is grinning behind her. I spring up and stop her she says let go you take drugs even if this ABHD exists that means you are mentally ill so you don't deserve it. Then I say like hell I will first of all it's called ADHD second of all it is a disorder not a mental illness and third of you can fuck off with your little thief of a son. She lets go and gasped I fall with the robot but luckily neither me or the robot get hurt but I decided to ruin her by screaming bloody murder then some people gather around ask what happened and I say she tried to steal my robot but I stop her and she pushes the robot which pushed me then I landed flat on my back on a wall plug facing me she is lucky it only knocked the air out of me because if I wasn't wearing this jacket it would have went through the skin. Eventually she got kicked out and prosecuted for by my school for assault on a student and trying to steal school property but I didn't press charges for assault because I didn't want the drama but let's say next time she sees EK he will be ED. Entitled Dad.